Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Yeah, I heard about, uh, they say TDJ's name mentioned in the lawsuit that Buddy did. I don't know if they just getting through it, just because I thought the man been released the lawsuit, but I don't know they just not reading it all the way. And basically, what I read is they saying that the man, Rodney, who did the lawsuit is saying that TDJ was used by P. Diddy. P. Diddy had a like an elaborate plan to use T.D. Jake's image to help soften the blow from the Cassie allegations, which is very, very normal. And, and it happens on different levels. So of course, P. Diddy went to T.D. Jake's, but it's celebrities who have come to me pro athletes, reality TV stars, they'll come to me and take a picture with me, post it online or have a conversation with me and then have a PR person put it in a in an article saying that they working with life coach Tony Gaskins to work on themselves and do whatever and it just was because at that time I was the, you know, the biggest life coach name out there based on social media reach and I literally would have had one conversation with the celebrity or if I was talking to the celebrity regularly they still wasn't changing their life it just they would kind of use somebody with a clean name and this happened in all different kind of ways so it happens also with like if you are a clean woman and you don't sleep around you will be befriended by the loose booty woman because she want the guys to think that she clean like you and vice versa with the guys. You know, the, the dope boy might put him one lame in his circle, what he call a square in his circle, just so anybody watching will be like, oh, that's a good two parent home, son of a pastor, that's his friend. So he must not be doing too much or vice versa. And so it just the same thing happened, and and we already knew that. I don't know why that's news. I guess the the news outlets just want to have T D Jake's name in the mouth and want to be able to post them old article for some clicks because they know T D Jake's you know fanatics gonna read it, click and read it. But that ain't nothing new. We kind of knew what P Diddy was doing when, when you seen the pictures. Of him and T.D. Jakes. Now it kind of. I'm going to have to read that whole lawsuit. Because it don't really say anything. And what they didn't pull from it. It ain't saying much about like. It ain't saying nothing about T.D. Jakes. Being no power bottom and all of that. See they holler about screen repair. Then when I have them come to my house. Repair the pool screens. They say they don't do two story. Screen repair. The raggedy behind. And so. That's something that you have to think about. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I took in, I think about that. And it, it'll be like, it may be somebody who trying to do something or got something going on and they will take and come and take a picture with me and post it on social media. And that picture, that's association. That association tells somebody oh you know this person that person got you know that that's a big name and it, it it would sound arrogant to be like hey you know no nah, don't post pictures you know I don't, I don't want nobody i don't post pictures with people but a lot of men do that a lot of men post pictures like it what i mean by that is you can meet a man and he do security at the club and that particular club br bring in the rappers. He might not tell you he getting $10 an hour doing security at the club, but he get to take a picture with all these different rappers that come in and do a concert at this little club. And then now he posts that on his Facebook and his Instagram. And when you go look at him, you like, man, I, I never thought I would date a, so, uh, a security guard, but a club bouncer basically, but... <clears throat> This man with Lil Boosie, he with Jeezy, he with 
little webby, a little scrappy. <clears throat> and he telling you, yeah, I do personal security for <clears throat> a lot of legendary artists that still tour and do things. And just because they've been around for so long, they got such a fan base. And because they come from the street life, you know, so they just trust me to have they back and watch out for them. And I got to do what I got to do. And then you go to the Instagram, you like, oh, okay. And he literally getting $10 an hour and he just take a picture with everybody who come and perform. Men do that all the time. And so here go P did it, but then bit more want to change. Didn't want to change any more than a man on the moon, but he come taking these pictures with, with old TD. And now they saying that, you know, P Diddy had cameras in every room, which I always think about that if I'm in an Airbnb where that hidden camera at and a lot of times the camera got night vision and so that's what I meant me and my wife wouldn't be doing no funny business no hanky panky in no Airbnb and all of that cause you just can't never you don't never know what's going on nah they might mess around and every now and then I let them get a shot of booty cheeks getting out the shower but other than that I be covered up I be I, I be waiting on the cameras, looking for the cameras. So now they saying P did it got you know everybody that came to his parties. He got them in compromising situations in these bedrooms because he had hidden cameras. Is it true? You don't know. Would I put it past did it? Would not put it past him at all. Would not put it past him at all. He looked like the type to do it, especially after what he did to Cassie and I mean that that woman not finna tell no lie she she might put a little bit of sauce on one part of it but you ain't finna tell no whole elaborate lie that big that's just too much to think about that's too much that's too much to come up with especially for somebody like Cassie who stay out the way who mind their business like I know loud mouth artists who got secrets that ain't never told that's how when people be talking about, oh, allegedly, allegedly, people lying. Listen, I know loud mouth artists, R&B singers, that's loud, that cause all kind of chaos and drama, that got secrets that I know about that they ain't never told in the media. Never told. They got secrets about people who didn't had trouble, and they could have came out and joined the Me Too and jumped on them, I'm jumping on that Me Too. They ain't jump on that Me Too movement. And they love drama, love being the victim, love being, so that way when you got somebody that's out the way, quiet, minding her business like Cassie, and she got to come out and tell her side of it, I believe it, I believe it. And, and, and the thing about it is, if it wasn't true, then did it wouldn't be running around. For one, he wouldn't have settled if it wasn't true. Because that stuff so that type of stuff you could prove. That type of stuff, stuff got to line up to prove to prove that on somebody. And you gonna fight, especially a man. If if a woman comes saying, I did this and did that to her, and I ain't do it, I'm finna fight that. And I'm gonna fight it for the sole reason that just me telling my story. Because I'm telling the truth, you're going to be able to tell I'm telling the truth. You're going to be able to tell I'm telling the truth. I'm going to fight it just for that reason alone. If it ain't nothing but for public opinion. So people could hear my testimony, see my conviction, see how my story come together. Cross the T's, dot the I's and say, yeah, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. Eight weeks of talking and never once did the story change. And all love connected. See, you ain't got to remember nothing when you telling the truth. P. Diddy got right on up out of there. Settle, man. And then here come this buddy. Now, see, the thing about it is, the reason why P. Diddy ain't selling with this buddy just yet is because his money gone. He ain't got it. He ain't gotten 30 M's. Because, see, that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like, people think, People think that these people that so-called be now just got millions and millions and millions and millions. Uh, see the settlement, what he did with Cassie, it was a, it was alleged. It was never released what he gave. 
it said in there, his lawyer said she was asking for 30 M's or something like that. So that number got out there, but that settlement could have been 100 M's. It could have been 200 M's for having her have to go all the way and waste her time. Her lawyers could have said, we get 33 and a third, so now this 30 done went up. Yesterday price is not today's price. That could have happened right now. So did is almost cash broke. He might be sitting on, he might be sitting on at the most 10 million. But if that, because a lot of times people don't understand if these people money don't be in cash, they money be in stock. Meaning if he got piece of a liquor brand, which I think that got ended. If he got piece of a liquor brand, he got equity. Let's say he got 50% equity. Let's say the brand worth a billion. The brand worth the brand worth 10 million. You know, 50 million. That means if they sold a company, wow. The boy hit a school bus. School bus and the boy crashed. The boy done spent out of control. He hit the wall. He totally fine. He ain't got a scratch. To God be the glory. He ain't got a scratch. He in a Jeep Wrangler though. Them things a little tough. I sold my Jeep Wrangler and my homeboy wrecked it. And he said, had it not been that tough Jeep, he probably would have lost his life. I sold it to my homeboy. He wrecked it. Flipped it. I don't know what he was doing. And so, these people don't be having this cash. They got to go sell stock. They got to go sell equity if it's publicly traded. Or they got to sell it to somebody. So when you see Jay-Z and Beyonce buy a $100 million house, $80 million house, whatever they bought out there in Beverly Hills, they don't have to have that money in the bank. They could show a money market account, a portfolio. They could show they money that's on the market. They might have a hundred million on the market. 50 million, 80 million on the market. When the bank see that, oh, you good for it. Cause the bank know, don't nobody with real money let their money sit in the bank. Because when you got money in the bank, that's why I always have my money out the bank, my money on the market. My money that's in the bank is intended to be spent. Every dime of it, every month, the money that go in there is intended to come out of there. Because if your money is sitting in your checking account and you're not using it, it's one thing if it's sitting in there for a period of time because the market finna crash and you don't want to lose 20% of your money. So you take it off to let it sit for a little bit. But if you using it, like you invest in it, then whether it's in your business or what have you, now your money moving, so it ain't gonna be there forever. But if you finna leave it there for 10, 20 years, what the bank, all the bank gonna do is they gonna have it on the market. And you just looking at numbers. And then when you do a withdrawal transaction, it's basically they just fronting you money out, they cash. But they, it just digital, it just, you know, numbers moving. But they investing your money and they making money on your money. So if it's sitting there a year, they finna make 10 to 20% on your money. And if it's in a savings account, they finna give you what they tell you they're gonna give you, which is 0.5 up to the most a bank will give is like 2.5% on a on a savings account. But most of them most right now 0.5 to 1%. But they finna make the mass on it. And so these people like P. Diddy, P. Diddy ain't got 30 million for this man. Because if he had 30 million, if P. Diddy had $100 million sitting in the bank account, he'll get his man in 30 M's. He'll hit him right with it. Whatever he's suing for, I don't know what he's suing for, but he'll, he'll hit him with it because the man got too much stuff in this here lawsuit to be sitting down and to be going to court and to be talking about all this. And then, and this man, he got to be in hiding because listen, everybody got somebody crazy that'll knock somebody head off for 10K. So they saying Philadelphia rapper. Now Philadelphia rapper, that could that could, that could be Benny Siegel. You know, I think he from Philadelphia. One on that could be Freeway. 
That could be one of them guys that, you know, somebody else that used to deal with Diddy. He ain't got to be Meek Mill. So Meek Mill could be like, well, no, it just say Philly Rapper. That don't mean it's me. Now, we all think it's Meek Mill. But you trying to tell me you don't think Meek Mill got somebody that he could get 10 stakes to to take take old Rodney out? Rodney got to be in hiding. Rodney, Usher got somebody. Usher old soft dancing behind. He got somebody out of Atlanta. Usher got somebody that he could get 10 stakes to take butter on out. And some people don't care about sitting down doing a little time because they know these men got the money to get them the best lawyer. And then they know that, or they at least told that, okay, boom, you got to do time. You go do 10 years, man. I got a million for you. And I'm going to keep your books full. It, people out here killing people for free. So to get your little money, get your little guarantee, oh, that, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. I'm a God-fearing man. You might contempt me. Right number. <laughs> Right number, I might. Hey, what? What you need? Uh, how much? Uh, here go that. Here go that checking account. Let me see that wire here. All right, I'm just being real with you. Our man could be tempted because we do that for free. You touch our sister wrong, you we, you finna lay down. You touch our mama wrong, you finna lay down. Point blank period. Pastor, priest. Police officer, principal, anybody will lay somebody down. Every man will lay somebody down. Every man got killing his blood. That's why I tell women, do not do not get beside yourself and be jumping bad with no man. I don't care if the man is four foot ten and 40 pounds. He will throw you across the roof because just the natural strength of a man. Do not think that you ever in your life could whoop a man. Ever in your life. Because God made men to protect. God made men. How you think David beat Goliath? David ain't supposed to be able to beat Goliath, but he just got the wherewithal with that slaying. So if David could beat Goliath with that slaying, what do you think he could do to any woman walking the face of the earth with that slaying? Same thing and worse. And won't even have to use no slaying. You see what I'm saying? So what you got to realize is with a situation like this, this Rodney. He know his life on the line. That man is up under somebody's bed somewhere. He ain't just hiding at somebody's house. He up under the bed like the girl on the movie Taken, waiting to get that ankle grab. He is up under somebody's bed and he at his third cousin. Rodney is at his third cousin, little sister, second cousin, nephew house. That's where Rodney at. Rodney ain't at his mama house, at his auntie house, at his grandma house. He ain't at his house. Rodney at down the line family house. The reason why, cause Meat Mill want him right now. Stevie J want him right now. We ain't know Stevie J was digging off in booty. We did not know that. We could have assumed it cause he was with Jocelyn crazy behind it's like you got to be into some kind of funny business if you willing to be with jocelyn how she be popping off and so but we ain't know that about stevie j so see this is the thing right here what you got to realize and understand but the lessons you got to take for this from one be careful of your association even the bible talk about your association be careful of your association see it's okay to minister it's okay to be minister but you got to be careful and make sure when you being used for a pr stunt and you can't stop it all we can't blame td jakes he can't stop it all not going to the party you're doing too much how 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 did it fly into the house come on over to the house because he's a celebrity come on into the house sarita either get us a chef sarita or get in there and make you make you uh shepherd pie and all right now did it let's go on over here to the den now leave your little toys and stuff from your parties but let's go on over here to the den and we're gonna sit down and have a soul session that's what you do you don't go to the party like if i coach strippers i'm not going to the strip club i ain't going to the strip club like hey <laughs> 
in here supporting you. Yeah, girl. Session after this. No. I ain't going to no script club. Listen, woman. Go on here on this site. Click. Click. Book Tony. Make that payment. $500. Yeah, I don't care about how big your booty is. I don't care about that thong up, that g screen booty. $500. And then we're going to have us a phone call. No, no, I, I'm not getting on Zoom. I'm not getting on Zoom, man. I'm not finna be looking in the eyes for an hour. And you just got off that pole. Absolutely not. We talking on the phone, man. And you got to keep your distance. So, TD... I'm going to tell you something from living the way T.D. live. Because I live like he lived or like he had to live for so long if he was living it. After a while, living right, like, you got to think. I was a womanizer who was just sleeping around. So from the age of 16 to the age of 21, you know, I stopped counting at about 80 women. So you're looking at, what's that, five years so I'm averaging over 12 women a year. That's like a different woman a month. It was one day in a 24 hour period that I slept with three women in 24 hours. You know, I was out there, you know, what they call BDE, Big E. I was out there confident with that thing. Like I just ain't, you know, I was out there wilding. And, and me and my homeboys, we was, we was racing. You know, we was racing, we was betting. That was just what we do, hey, who could get the most? Hey, you did that? Yeah, all right, yeah. And that was just life. That's And a lot of women don't understand that about certain type of men. So now here I am, I get married, and I say, Lord, give me the strength to be faithful. A lot of people don't think that you could be faithful after you have been promiscuous, but it's actually easier for me to be faithful because I done did it all, seen it all, had it all, felt it all. And what, what did I surmise? After I stopped counting at 79, it's all the same. A lot of times women be, you know, bragging and talking about, yeah, you get some of this, you ain't never going back. Listen, it is all the same. It is all the same. All the races. The only thing that's different is the smell. That's the only that's the only thing that's different. Is black and Hispanic smell a little stronger. pH be a little stronger. But uh, that's that's it. That's it. Some people have ingrowns, and you know, and the, the way the things shape that that be it. So if you a woman, don't ever flatter yourself about that thing. It worked the same as everybody else's. Don't ever flatter yourself. Don't ever think people be talking about power of the the p. It ain't got no power. It be in the man mind. The man give it the power because of the release he get but the thing ain't got no power because he could do that with his hand he just don't realize that he give it the power so when i became faithful after you faithful for so long you hit five years you hit 10 years you start to get a little itch you start to get a little itch you like man okay i'm about ready to see something else now <laughs> Just hear a different laugh or something like just, And that's where the power of God come in at. Because you start to get your little itch. Now, I don't know if TD, what he's into. You know, if it was women and, you know, they trying to say it was men. I, I don't know. That's his life. But I don't know what he was into. But I just know it when even when God reformed you, what the devil's goal is, is to test you with what God reformed you from what God redeem you from. So if it was cocaine, you could be sober five, 10 years. That don't mean you don't get, that nose don't go to twitching for that coat. If it was alcohol, you could be sober for 10 years. That don't mean you don't have a bad day and you just want to hit you a shot. And you just tell yourself just one shot. It's just going to be one shot. Just, just, just that, that old hand too. But I'm going to, ooh, just one time, just let it burn that chest and I'm done. Yeah, you're going to tell you, if it was gambling, you could be, you know, done with gambling. Boom. A year you done, 
boom, next thing you know, you got that itch. You want to gamble. And so, oh, okay, it's like a therapy place. Maybe it's called Real Advice. And so, that's the thing. It, you So when TD went to that party, it just was a little itch because on the back of, in the back of his head, he like, I wonder if I would have been like an R&B singer. Nah, we ain't got two men on built like that, Gerald Levert. But he probably was thinking, I wonder if I would have been an R&B singer. Or if I wonder if I was just Tyler Perry, not no preacher, but just a big time producer. Or if I wonder if I was, you know, such John Grisham, just a big time author, you know, and I and if I wasn't a pastor and I would get invited to the EP Diddy parties regularly, I'm just curious to see what go down there. TDJ did not go to Diddy party to say happy birthday. He went to show support. I believe his heart wanted to show support to show Diddy. I'm not judging you. I'm not looking down on you. But what TD failed to realize is that ain't your job. You're a person, if they feel like you looking down on them by not coming to an environment that is not conducive to your lifestyle, then that's their problem. If they can't understand and respect your stance, that's their problem. You can't worry about how somebody feel about your policies and procedures. And that's the mistake that TD made, old as he is. What I mean by that is, age don't equal wisdom. TD got a lot of linguistics. He used a lot of big words, but that don't mean that he got all knowledge. Because eighth grade wisdom would have told him not to go to that party. And even though he is older, he still went to that party and did what he did. You know, went in there and, and got on camera and they put the man on camera. So we done seen a man on camera at the party wishing the man happy birthday. And he could have sat right there. I'm not going to. I feel like it's a lot to go to a party one time and then you in the room as a power bottom. I just feel like that's a whole lot. That's, that's, that's doing too much on the first party. Now, on the 10th, 15th party, if, if you into that type of thing, I could see you doing that. But on the first party, just to go get whoa out on the first party, I, I really don't believe that by the old TD. I don't believe that. And, and then I see the boy do the skit that 50 Cent posted on Instagram. The boy do the skit. When he in the parking lot and he talking like he did it on the phone, he said, hey, TD. It sounded like he said, hey, TD, tell them girls to come to our party later. I said, this man say TD. I said, this man put TD Jakes in the skit. Maybe he said something else, but it sounded like to me he said TD. I said, boy, that's a bad look. But I would, I would hate to be TD Jakes right now, man. When you talk about, man, listen. I done, man, I done parted ways with a company and couldn't sleep for felt like four years <laughs> I, not literally but at least four weeks at least four days couldn't sleep just think about what i did wrong was i not good enough what what happened should have did this should have did that you know when you lose a job or or you so-called amicably part ways or whatever it don't matter how how you phrase it it's still it bothers you. like i done went through that and couldn't hardly sleep. I can't, I, man, I can't imagine how T.D. Jakes is. I mean, he is, you know when you cry and if you cry, land on your stomach, your bike jumping up and down, like you, like, that's why they got the dance called a cry baby. I guarantee you T.D. didn't cry like that. And he probably, he looked like tight. He probably done cried like that 10 times. Man, I, man, my heart go out to the man. Even though he, he did it himself, and old as Methuselah should have known better, but you best to believe Mike Todd would have been in there. You best to believe um, the little guy with the glasses would have been in there. You best to believe it. If TD would go in there, you best to believe William Murphy would have been in there. Ain't none of them get the invite, though. You best to believe they would have been in there. First, they would have been in there twerking. They wouldn't have just been sitting down like TD was giving no happy birthday on no video. They would have been in there twerking. 
they would have been in there twerking. Now, them three pastors I mentioned, I could see all of them in the slobbing knob on the first day. Just got it on their spirit. They got it on their spirit and don't even realize it's on their spirit. Don't even realize that that porn coming through that spirit. Jamal Bryant would have been in there quick. He'd have been in there on a blunt. He And he looked like he might have snorted them a line. On the spirit, just because of what they do at their church and how they move. But see, he ain't want the compromised pastors. Even, even a demon know Jesus. Diddy did not call Mike Todd because he already could look at him and tell what he owned. He wanted somebody that we see as blemish and spot free. That's T.D. Jakes. For the most part, now I always kind of had a side eye because I just know men. And so even with myself, I know I don't ever get too high on no horse because I know that any of us could fall. And so I always, I never worship a man. I never worship humans. And, but to the, to the masses, to the public, the public is sheep. And instead of being sheep for Jesus, the public becomes sheep for man. So most people worship T.D. Jakes over God. A lot of his parishioners worship him over God. They see him as God. And so that's what Diddy wanted. He said, I'm going to get somebody that if this man will, will hang with me, take pictures with me, and he is blemish and spot free in the eyes of man, if he will hang with me, take pictures with me, and come to my party, then I'm all the way verified. Okay, where well, I'm turning, okay. I'm all the way verified, I'm all the way. People gonna say, man, P. Diddy must have a great heart. He must have a great heart. And to, for for T.D. Jace to hang with him, for T.D. Jace to go to his party, T.D. Jace really sees his heart. He really knows his heart. For him to go to his party and just put himself in the line of scrutiny, P. Diddy must be an amazing person. That's what the narrative P. Diddy wanted when them before them Cassie allegations came out. See. He went to doing that and lining that up and doing that because that, that came to him first. He already knew it was coming and he wanted to be tough and thought she was bluffing, thought she wasn't going to pull that trigger. So he went to lining that up and then boom, she said, no, nah, bro, <laughs> you trying me. <laughs> what you think this is? Absolutely not. You trying me. I'm finna take this stand. And she risk a lot, man. Like the way the mind, the mind work. People think that oh, a secure man, not gonna, a secure man not gonna. That's that's not how the mind work. It ain't got nothing to do with a man being secure. If I find out my wife was having a train ran on her, and with male prostitutes, and did it was watching, it don't matter how much I pray, how much none of that. The mind, the brain works on it own. God will give you the strength not to react. God will give you the strength to weather the storm. And I don't even know if, if Cassie's husband is a believer, but you best to believe he having nightmares. He is seeing six foot four, six foot six, six foot eight black men who built like Greek sculptures and African sculptures do whatever to his wife and he is having nightmares. And people don't understand that that's what she she went through a lot. She deserved every dime she got on that settlement because she have given her husband and herself, not just herself, now her husband, and then guess what? Her kids as well. They are gonna hear about that stuff. They are gonna go through that stuff. Kids do not care. I learned with my son at a Christian school, they bully each other about everything. Like somebody could break their leg and they'll be picking on them at a Christian school 
somebody could slip and bust their head open and, and it'll be a joke once, once that scab start to form. My dad was telling me back in his day, his mama died and he'd go to school and people would be like, eh, hey, you ain't got no mama, you ain't got no mama. And it's like, I, when my daddy told me that, I was like, are you kidding me? He said, no, man. He said, kids, it's cruel. And so I thought about that. And so that's what you got to realize, like, Cassie, she, when she did this, man, she, she, she put herself in a position to where, you know, her kids gonna go through it. And people try to think like, oh, no, ain't no repercussions of, of coming out. There's no repercussions of saying, you know, what you got to say. Yes, it is. You go through a lot. You go through a lot. That's why 99% of people who have gone through what Cassie have gone through or any version of it don't tell because it's a lot that come with that. And so even with this guy Rodney and now, men for men is different. Men don't tell the truth for the same reason, but Rodney, old Rodney, the fact that he came on, he went on that TikTok and talk, just talked about they owe him money, it just made him look funny. It made him look funny. He should have had, he should have talked about his distress or something or being fondled, but he just went to talking about the money they, they didn't pay him. And it's like, okay, is you, all right, is you upset that you was fondled or is you upset that you didn't get paid? Which one is it, Ron, Rodney? Did you want to get fondled on, but you wanted to be paid as well? And because you didn't get, because you didn't get paid, now you becoming the, the messy gay man because you didn't get everything out the deal that you wanted? What, which one is it now, Rodney? Because Cassie ain't come out and say nothing about no pay. She was old. She come out and talk about what she went through. And I'm sure you know Cassie, Danity Child, Danity Kane, uh, B2K, or whoever. You know every artist did it ever represented is old Mickens. Mickens. I know Mace old millions. Everybody old millions. If Diddy represented them, was they manager or whatever, producer or whatever, record label exec, they old millions. Cass ain't bringing that up. Cass say, listen, this is what I went through and he got to pay for this. She wanted, she wanted to be prosecuted. It wasn't even about no settlement. Settlement came just cause like, okay, we can't really prosecute this. <clears throat> Other than, you know, a civil court and where you get a settlement, but ain't gonna be no prison sentence from this. So that was the thing. I got a facial I'm headed to, I'm going to get this here face. It's been a little minute before I got one, since I got one. And boy, one thing about these facial boy, whew, I got one of the more porous noses. Well, when they get on that nose, it feel like they cut my nose off my face. One lady, she just going, 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 just cleaning them pores on my nose. I'm, I said, I said, come, I said, hey, uh, that's a little painful, though. Now. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it. Really, I, you ain't got to get it that good. You ain't got to get it that good. Listen, be more poor too. So I'm going here. That, that was an Asian lady. This lady here, she's a white lady. Yeah, you know, them Asians. And anything they do in the cosmetic and them nails and all of that, boy, they finna do it top notch. You hear me? They trying to go all the way. I wish I could afford me one of these houses out here. One day, no, I don't wanna live out here. Right on the front street, right here on somebody. You can't you ain't got no privacy. Well, I'm here to my, to my uh, facial. So, hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.